How do we convert leads to sales? You're like, Cody, okay, let's hear, let's hear it, man. Let's hear the good stuff. We heard your story. We know what you do. Let, let's talk, let's talk numbers. Let's hear the brass tacks, right? Okay, so what I want to start with is a recent is is a study that I'm going to share with you that's going to be a part of this ebook. And I'll, at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll remind me, I'll, I'll give the URL of where to actually go and get this ebook and download it for free. Okay. There's no shipping and handling. There's no free trial. It's actually freaking free. Okay. So in this study that I'm, that I'm going to reference, th th they worked, they worked over three years, 15,000 unique internet leads, and they made a hundred thousand calls over three years. And here's what they found. Here's what they found. The best days to make contact, the best, best, best days to make contact were Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. We're Wednesday and Thursday. The best times, the best times to make contact ended up being about eight to 9 AM and about four to six PM. So it's actually reaffirming a lot of things I knew and a lot of things you may have known. Okay. We noticed a response to the time that after the, the, the first five minutes was the best time to respond. And after five minutes, the contact rate decreased 400% within the next five minutes after that, which is crazy to think about, right? Persistence, the actual persistence of, okay, are we gonna continue to work these things? A lot of agents, like the study is that 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact, okay? But most insurance agents go one touch. Sometimes go, Sometimes we buy a lead, we won't even call it. You ever been that dude or, or dudette, right? I have, okay? And you can raise your hand with me as, 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 as we're a part of this virtual live, okay? Because that, is a reality. Some call it none. Some call it once. Some call it twice. Some don't call it at all. Okay. So what, 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 what they noticed in this study is that when they went six calls, they had a 90% chance of contact, a 90% chance of contact by going six calls. Okay. By going six calls. So I set you up with that study to really open up your eyes to think about your specific business right now. When you're thinking about your specific business, I want you to take some notes today. Okay. And, and when you're taking notes today, I want you to think about you, what you do, how you do it. And I want to give you tangible ideas and nuggets for free. My goal is that over, that over the next 20, 30 minutes, you leave and you say, holy crap, that was the best. 30 minutes of training I've ever received. That's my goal for you. And I'm gonna do everything in my power for that to be a reality. Okay. So this will be a part of that free ebook at the end, by the way. Okay. So there you go. Also, also I want to jump into what is my 12 point, 12 point follow up system. Okay. When you're working leads and following up with leads, here is what it is. Okay, here is what it is. We're going to go day one, day two, day three. Now you can follow up with some leads after that. However, we're going to put all of our emphasis in the first 72 hours when they have the best chance of remembering that they were a lead to begin with. So let's look at calls, text, and emails. Okay, calls, text, and emails. I want you to go three calls. Day one, one text, one email. That's a total of how many touches? That's five, right? Day two, two calls, one text, one email. That's four total touches. Day three, one call, one text, one email. That's three total touches. If, if you add those up, five, four, and three, that's 12 total touches within the first 72 hours, okay? Now I'm gonna move through a lot of this quick. There's a ton of material I gotta cover today. That's the main pieces, okay? Now, let me give you, we've got a CA sales system with hundreds of videos that is extremely elaborate, that's great for training sales teams, all right? That was the 12 touch follow-up system. Now, I want you to also leave one voicemail per day, right? When you can, a lot of agents will door knock 
the, the leads that they couldn't reach, right? That were unreached. Now, here's some other things. We, we learned earlier that six calls can equal a 90% chance of contact. Now, that is probably a little high for what we would see nowadays. This study was, was a few years old. However, if that's the optimal amount of calls, we should never not go to six, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a secret that you need to be doing that will increase contact rate, and that is something called triple dialing. If you're not triple dialing, you are missing out on talking to leads. And what do you buy leads for? You buy leads to talk to them. You don't buy leads to sell them. You buy leads just to simply have a conversation with them. That's it. I want to talk to them, right? So triple dialing. And what I mean by that is, okay, dial. They don't answer. I don't leave a voicemail. Hang up. Call again immediately. Dial. Don't leave a voicemail. They don't answer. Hang up and do it again. Okay, triple dialing. I want to go up to three calls, bang, 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 because that will increase your answer rate the absolute most. Okay, so here's some other things that you can do to really help you get help get you on the phone. A lead vendor's job, what, what the biggest misconception in our insurance industry is, is a lead vendor or a marketing company or when you generate your own leads or whatever, is for those to be sales. Leads never equal sales. Leads is an opportunity. And I want, to, I want you to write this down today. Leads is an opportunity for you to make a sale. It's an opportunity to talk to someone. It's someone that has, a lead is someone that has some level of interest, maybe a 10, maybe a one. It's your job as a salesperson to follow up enough and be persistent enough to talk to them, have a conversation. It's also your job as a salesperson to be good enough at the sales process and that piece, to, if they're a one, to move them up, right? If they're a six, to move them to a 10, right? To get them to convert them. The converting piece is on you. The talking to a piece is on you, right? You can do everything in your power to make that a reality. Now, also, you need to be thinking about calling at different times of the day, just because we know the best times to call doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that you should call them every day at 3.30 or 4 o'clock and you just keep calling. Like, I only make calls at certain times, Cody, so I only call them this. If they don't answer three days in a row at the same time, maybe they're unable to answer the phone during that time. So let's take outside the box a little bit, okay? Also, calling with a different phone number can get you outside of the box and can get you thinking, right? Because if that's the case, if you need to do that, when you do that, you could call from your office, you could call from your cell phone, I can go call from a pay phone if those even exist anymore, right? I can go to I can I can I can go to my you know grandparents' house and dial from a rotary phone if I want, you know? Or I I, I can I can I can a, 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 a colleague, right, team member's phone. I can call from Google Voice, right? You have options, whether you believe it or not. My spouse is, right? You have options, whether you believe it or not, okay? So a different phone number is a good op opportunity as well. Because if you think about this, the big thing that most of us forget and that we don't realize is that before I get into some actual specific phone tips that you've probably never heard before that you need to hear, 80% of cells, 80% of cells are made between the fifth and the twelfth contact but most of us do not follow up. Are we lazy? Do we not want money? Do we not want to help people? Like what's the, re are, are, we, are we just so successful that we can't call someone twice or even once? Like what, what's the deal there, okay? So that's some initial piece. I'm gonna move the phone, to, I got, again, I got six pages of content that I'm trying to get through as fast as I can because you're gonna get access to this, okay, to rewatch. And you're also gonna get access to this from me. I'm gonna show you, tell you at the end how to get access to this entire book for free. Okay, so let's get into some actual phone tips. Okay, some actual phone tips. The first one is you need to assume that the right person answered the phone. What do I mean by that? That initial the, the 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 initial conversation with someone is the absolute best way to make sure. Okay, is the absolute best way to make sure when you speak, a lot of people are trained to say, I'm looking for Betty, is this Betty, can I talk to Betty, are you Betty, do you know Betty, right? That is not the way to open up a phone call. Most of us are trained to ask a question when we jump on the phone. No. The answer is, hello Betty. And you say, well, well, well if you think about this, 
Which one is more successful? Which one is more confident? Hello, is this Betty? Or, hello Betty. The second one. And that's what you need to be doing. Okay, so that's the first tip. The second tip is I only use my first name when I'm making calls. Last name, nobody cares. They're gonna forget. Company name, nobody cares. They'll probably forget or it'll also give them a chance to interject early in the call. My job in the first 30, 15, 30, 60 seconds of a call is to remain, is to take control, remove the opportunity for, for objections, and to continue down the script. Okay, but you can't do that if we're not thinking outside the box and if and if we're if we're allowing them to interject. When I say, well, this is Cody with you know senior marketing specialists, right? They may say, well, I've never heard of them. Who is that, right? That's a chance for them to interject, and we do not want that, so I don't even put it, okay? Don't even put it. Third thing is I don't ask, I don't ask what every other telemarketer and salesperson in the world ask, which is how are you? I don't ask it, okay? We're trained to ask it. Every telemarketer in the world ask it, and you don't even care how they're doing because you don't even know them yet, okay? So don't ask how are you. Fourth tip is don't do not pause. Okay, so I'm about to give you a miraculous, a miraculous phrase. Hello, this is, hello Betty. This is Cody. I'm getting back to you. What happened, well, here's the example of the wrong call, is insurance agents make a call and they say, hello, here's the example of a complete wrong call. Hello, I'm looking for Betty. Hey Betty, this is Cody Askins with Senior Marketing Specialist. How are, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing I'm doing okay. You know why are you calling me? Well, Miss Betty, you filled out a form online saying that that you wanted to get a quote or to talk to an agent about g getting a quote for in, for your insurance. And then we pause. And when you pause right there, here's what you're saying: I'm not confident, right? I don't know what to say. Betty, I'm not any good. Betty, please take control of the call right now. And, and please, Betty, please give me an objection right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Please insert an objection right here. The pause without a question is the death of the call. I want you to never do that again. Can we have a mutual agreement right now that you will never do that again? Okay, you promise? All right, good. Okay, so don't pause, All right? I'm going to give you an example of a right call in a second. Also, sell a drop off. If you're setting physical face-to-face -face appointments, sell a drop-off, okay? Or if you are doing phone sales, right? Then have a statement early on to absolutely grab control. That, that does what? That fish with a question, right? You say, well, Cody, give me an example, right? Hello, Betty. Yes, this is Cody. Hey, we're getting back to you about those new state approved final expense programs uh, that you may qualify for. Now tell me, Miss Betty, are you still living in the state of Missouri? Right? That's a, con that, that, that's a statement to grab control early in the call. I'm either selling a drop off time, either way I'm grabbing control, I'm either selling a drop off time, or I'm trying to gain control immediately to keep them on the phone so that I can start to qualify them in or out of the product. Right? Okay, so that's the, that, that's the last piece. Now, hey, if you love this video and you want to learn how to attract more customers immediately, all right, the next video is right here. It's for you. Click on there and I'll see you over there. In the insurance industry, if people can reach out to you to do business with you, it's a lay down sell. Yeah, I think if you really understand the concept, the, the concept of being famous, right? I live outside of.